Britain has a Britain has a very long-standing relationship with India, in many ways a unique relationship. Uh, I think that there are two countries in the world with which Britain has a, a, a stronger and closer bond and relationship than any other. One is the United States and the other is India. And the Indian relationship, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, you notice that the moment you see Britain and India interacting, whether it's here in the UK or in India, there's an instant connection. Uh, the English language is a language of business. The law is basically the same. The accounting um, practices are basically the same. Business practices are basically the same. Mm -hmm. free of course, you have um, you yourself come across uh, problems with the um, uh, state um, yes. restrictive practices when you were trying to. Um, I suppose about it in the book, you were trying to um, impact state yeah. there from state, and there was a lot of red tape, and I think there is a lot of red tape. In the, uh, I mean, what I'm saying is that the basic principles are the same, mm. and one is often on the same wavelength when doing business in and with India. That said, we're not doing any mu anywhere near as much as we ought to be doing, given the special relationship that we have with India. And that is one of our main tasks with the India-British Partnership Network, which is now the UK-India Business Council. We are getting significant support, a million pounds a year, from UK Trade and Investment, from the Foreign Commonwealth Office and the Department of Business, Enterprise and Regulatory Reform. Uh, so that backing from UK Trade and Investment, from UKTI, has now enabled the UK India Business Council to set up our own offices, to have a chief executive and a team, to be now employing people in India, to be reaching out to the regions in the UK, to encourage and help and be a catalyst and a focal point for business between Britain and India. And the potential is huge. And um, we are competing. We're competing with the United States. We're competing with other European countries. We're competing with Japan, with Korea. Um, everyone, the whole world, has woken up to Opportunity India. And uh, India's growth rate is not a flash in the pan. This is not something that's fashionable today. This is sustained high growth that is going to continue and has been forecast to continue by the by virtually all the major economic institutions and banks such as Goldman Sachs where they predict mm -hmm. that India's growth will be an average of 8% for at least the next decade and, and over the next four decades India will probably by 2050 overtake the United States to become one of the two largest economies in the world alongside China. So this is going to be a sustained period of growth a consumer market of 300 million people today in India in purchasing power parity terms, growing at the population of a country like the Netherlands, 14, 15 million people a year. Um, so the opportunity for British business in India is, is absolutely tremendous. And of course, Indian companies more and more are listing on the London Stock Exchange, on the main list and AIM, um, where Indian companies are acquiring. British companies on a massive scale in the way that Tata acquired Chorus, which is a $10 billion deal. UK companies are acquiring Indian companies in a very big way in the way that Vodafone just acquired Hutch in India, another $10 billion deal. Uh, and it's only the beginning. Exactly. Um, and um, what, 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 just say a little bit, if you would, about the um, um, uh, British India part of the anger. British ideas that it's yes, UK India Business Council. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, the uh, the uh, um, day to day of, um, responsibilities that you have, or the general responsibilities you have as, yes. as, as chairman, what, what, uh, what, what, what do you do basically? Well, I, we are the private sector lead for Britain with India, where business is concerned. And the organization, the UKIBC, we have offices that are available to our members. It is open to join. We have different levels of membership, um, right from individuals joining, students joining, uh, to large corporates. We have major sponsors. In fact, our first major sponsor um, uh, has been PricewaterhouseCoopers, who um, sponsored a significant amount and commit for three years. We've had the 
Corporation of London, uh, with the Lord Mayor and his team joining us as an institutional member. Um, we work very, very closely with all sizes of business and with the regions as well. And, and it is very much about uh, engaging with India. So we, have, we host delegations on a regular basis. Uh, in December 2007, we have, for example, the annual Joint Economic and Trade Committee meeting that takes place between Britain and India, where the UK IBC is leading in organizing that meeting between the commerce ministers of both countries, Kamal Nath of India and John Hutton, meeting across the table with the high commissioners of both countries, with the civil servants of both countries, and with the private sector representation of both countries round the table discussing the challenges and opportunities of doing business with India. Um, it is through that JETCO process that, for example, we um, decided to hold an investment summit between the two countries. And a year ago, I chaired the first ever investment summit in which both Dr. Manmohan Singh, the Indian Prime Minister, and Tony Blair, the British Prime Minister at the time, took part. Uh, so it, it, we're having, making significant progress. We, are, we address, as a UK IBC, the barriers to doing business in India. So, for example, at the moment, foreign lawyers are still not allowed to practice in India. So we have, um, we have been working very hard with the Indian government, with the law minister, uh, trying to allow our solicitors to practice in, in India. Um, there are restrictions on shareholdings, for example, in the insurance sector, Foreign companies can only own 26%. We're trying to get that raised to 49%. Lloyds of London at the moment is still not allowed because of a technicality to operate in India. We're trying to get mm -hmm. that changed. So we're constantly working away. And, and in the past, we've had success. So, for example, air services between the two countries. Until three years ago, there were only 19 direct flights on two airlines a week between the UK and India. Today there are over 119, and you have a choice of several airlines. Okay. The, the, um, what, the bottom line question there is... Uh, ah, hello. Thank you. Is, um, is, is it getting... No, which is... Can you bring... Sorry, could I... If you could... I don't know which one's mine or... Um, I'll just keep that on this. It's out of shot, isn't it, if I keep it down here? Thank you. Would you... Which, which is, um, so did you want any sugar in there or? That's all right, no, that's fine. Sure. Sure. Thank you very much. Yes, you were saying. Yes, I was just saying that the, 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 the one my question really is, um, is, is the work of the, making it easier for British, um, the British innovators and the British economy general to in general to benefit from this um, extraordinary growth that's taking in India, you know, sort of in, the, in the context of the global economy, which is in turn, um, which, which maybe tend to slow as far as Europe and the United States is concerned. Well, I, I think that um, India, for example, when there was the last when there was the last Southeast Asian, South again, when there was the last Southeast Asian crisis, India wasn't affected by it. Um, and in that sense, uh, the more British companies are involved in India, it is almost a hedge against any global recession because the Indian growth story is a consumption-led growth story, which is, I believe, going to continue. Yes, of course, India is not insulated. We live in an integrated global economy today. But it is far less susceptible to global recessions, I believe, than other countries.